Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do some mixed media stamping and what we're going to do is actually do some sketching with some watercolor pencils and um, kind of make little vessels and scenes for our small stamped images. And this video is brought to you by Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. Use the coupon code watercolor to save 20% off your order this week. So don't wait. It's only, um, it's only good for about nine days. Check out the video description for a full links on that coupon but super super fun super easy and I know you guys can do this so what I've done here is I sketched a little um little strawberry pot and then I stamped strawberries in it here I stamped a few just flower pots and some cobblestones there and again stamped some of my flowers in and I did the same here with this really wonky looking vase which was really scary looking until I stamped the flowers on here so when you're thinking about drawing something that you're going to stamp on, you want to look at the size of your images. So with the strawberry pot, I made the pot pretty big because of the size of the strawberries. If I had a tiny little pot and had these big strawberries coming out, it wouldn't look realistic. So you want to make sure you look at your stamps and, and draw a vessel or something that's going to go along the same size. Now here, like this little pot of pansies, I used my um, small pansy stamp in there only, not the big one because a big one would have, been, would have been way too big for that pot. So you just want to kind of keep perspective in um, in your mind as you're working here. Um, and then here for these, these roses, I thought the roses do really really well when you spread them out over like a wide area. I intend to do roses on this little window box here that I sketched um, and that works out really well and I'm able to use both sizes of the roses and have it look like it fits. I thought the strawberry pot was really fun so we're going to start with that one and I'm working on watercolor postcards and these are by Strathmore so they have the printing already on the back but then I just took a 9 by 12 piece of watercolor paper and I was able to cut it into quarters. And if you want to make a postcard it's so simple all you do is draw a line down the middle of the back and it's okay if it's not perfect because it will look more realistic. Draw a little square for your stamp area and you could even, you know, kind of gussy it up and make it actually look like a stamp. And then put three lines for an address. See, super simple. You don't have to go buy a postcard pack or stamps to do that because that's so easy. All right, so then for the uh, for the flower pot, a strawberry pot, I'm going to turn my paper so it's upright. And I really liked blue, so I'm going to make a blue pot, but you could do, um, you know, a terracotta colored pot. And then what I'm going to do is in the air, and I'm kind of like resting my hand on my table, because I'm not going to draw this with pencil. I'm going to go right in with my watercolor pencil. Um, I'm making an oval, and then when I feel like I've got a nice even oval, I'm going to set my pencil down and sketch that oval in there so I get a really nice oval. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one, same deal, up here up high. I'm going to try to have it lined up pretty well. You could also draw a line down the middle if that helped you line things up a little bit. Mine's a little crooked, but I think that's going to be all right. So what I'm going to do is connect my edges, flatten it out on the bottom, drop the edge, and do the same thing over here. Now, don't worry about it not being perfectly symmetrical because when you stamp your images, it's really going to help things out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of color with my pencil. Not a ton because this is going to dissolve. I'm using the Spectrum Noir uh, Aqua Blend pencils here. This is Aegean Blue. Use whatever you have. These are really nice, especially if you don't have any because they're not very expensive and they are light fast. And now I'm going to draw the little pockets on here. And I'm actually going to look at my uh, my last example just to, just to see kind of where I put them. I am going to put one pocket front and center because you know how those, if you've ever seen a strawberry planter, they've got those um, holes on the edge so you can really get a lot of strawberries planted in a small area. And then I'm going to do one kind of lower over here. Watercolor pencils are super forgiving um, as well so you can, you can kind of make your pot taller or shorter or fatter as you go. I'm going to do one kind of, kind of in the middle there. And kind of one in the middle here and if you have a story pot you can look at that's even better um i don't i'm just kind of remembering and and it's still going to be fine so i feel like i want my pot a little bit taller now all right so then back here i'm just going to kind of um i'm going to add a little bit more color i'm going to add a little bit of color underneath these little pockets so that i can shade them and they'll look a little more realistic Okay, and that'll be enough color to um, 
to do this. Now, so what I'm gonna do up here, because I really don't wanna line back there, because when we go and we stamp our stuff, we don't wanna have anything back there. So I'm just gonna kinda blur that out, okay? I don't even have to wipe it off. I just need to kinda blur it so it's not gonna show when I go to a stamp. And then I'm just adding water from my water brush to give it a little color. And I can always go in later with more, so don't feel like you have to do it all in one fell swoop. A lot of times it's better if you just put a little bit down and then you go back and add more if you need it. Watercolor is very forgiving. A lot of people think that uh, doing watercolor freehand is difficult or, um, you know, if you make a mistake, that's it. There's no correcting it, but that's just simply not true. You just need to go with the medium and not against it. And you don't need really expensive watercolor paper for this because um, because you're not really soaking the paper that much. So, you know, your Fabriano Studio or Canson XL or Strathmore, that's all going to be really, really good for this. I'll just give a little tint of color in there. And if you want a little more color and this is still wet, you don't want to go right on it with your pencil unless you're trying to define something. So if I go back in here and I, you know, go in and I add some defining lines, that works great because those aren't going to blend out, but you don't want to go in and add kind of body color in this fashion or it's not going to blend on you. If you do want to add more color, what you want to do is just pick up the color from your pencil like it's a pan of watercolor, then you can go in and add more color. You can even go with a deeper color if you want to, but I uh, I think that this is subtle and when in doubt, leave it out with this because you want your stamps to really shine too because um, because they're so pretty. And I tried to make it so that I don't have a ton of color above any of these pockets because that's where I'm going to be stamping. So I'm gonna, we're not masking, we're not leaving things out. Um, so we need to make sure we have space to do that. Now I want to have some, um, kind of some grass, like it's sitting out in the backyard, getting some sun. I'm gonna color that in with a little green. This is uh, cypress. Use whatever you like. I'm just, I just wiped off my brush there. and I'm gonna spread that around. And that just gives us a little grounding area for our little scene. And I'll go through the whole process on this one, but then I'm going to just show you kind of a few examples on how to do a couple of the other scenes I showed you. Um, and then I'm sure, you know, you've stamped with these before, or you've seen me do other videos with these, and please refer to some of the other ones if you're not um, familiar with how to do the, um, how to use the peg stamps and just make sure you have the current coupon code though because the older coupon codes aren't going to work this week so just make sure you have the most current coupon code and you'll see how easy it is i used a different green for my other example there but it doesn't really matter because that's pretty too now if you want some little tufts of grass now's a really good time to put them in because you can uh sketch on with your pencil right in that wet paper and it will give you really sharp lines that would be difficult to get with a water brush so you know just learn how to use your um use your supplies. Now this is a green I used on the other one and I really like that, but if I go in, like I said, and color on top, it's going to scratch the paper and give me streaks and not blend in. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to pick it up. Isn't that a pretty green? This green is um, pesto green. Oh, what a nice name. It does look like pesto, doesn't it? I love pesto. Actually, one of the pots that I sketched on there, I actually sketched from a flower pot that I have out back filled with uh, basil for pesto. There we go. And that just gives it, it's soft, it's easy, it's it's lovely. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry. While this is drying, I'm gonna show you how I did some of the other pots, okay? And um, we'll just, and that's what I do when I'm doing these. And um, I also wanna, I wanna mention, usually you have one side of your paper that's smoother and one that's rougher on watercolor paper. You wanna go on the smoother side for stamping. It really doesn't matter. These actually were fairly rough, but given the choice, I would go with the smoother side. Okay, let's do the trio of flower pots like we have right there. Um, super easy. We're going to start with, um, um, you know what, I like to actually sketch this one out in gray because we're going to do gray cobblestones and I just think it's a little easier. And this is uh, dove gray, which is really light. And if it doesn't show up, I'm going to just try, if it doesn't show up really well, I will, um, yeah, I'm going to go with a darker one just so you can see it a little better, but I would recommend doing something a little bit lighter. So basically, I'm just doing the front facing a shape of these pots. So this is a semicircle, guys, or a rectangle with cur a curved bottom. Don't get freaked out and don't make it tougher than it is. You can totally do this. Okay, so here I'm doing a, um, a rectangle and then I'm doing 
a couple slanted lines down. Don't worry if they're wonky because it's just going to add to the charm, okay? So try not to try not to feel like it has to be perfect. And this one over here kind of looks like a um like a teacup and a saucer. And then I realized I was looking at my wall of stamps and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a little teacup stamp and I could put plants in it. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cute. So also think of the different things you have um, on your stamp shelf or from other stamp companies. Um, if you have um, arbors or wheelbarrows or teacups or you know, urns or pots, things like that. Those will look so nice with these little flowers stamped into them. Even if you have like a stampscapes where you have like a little house, if you could do flowers in the foreground and give a little more depth to your scene. These little ovals are just pebbles. That's what, that's what they're gonna be. And there's that scene. And then for coloring, um, I decided to do, cause the pot that I actually looked at for this head, uh, had a blue ceramic um, a two-tone blue like um, glaze on it. It was really pretty so I thought I would just kind of emulate that and then they had this had this like kind of like streaky purple um, finish kind of coming down which I thought was really pretty and then something else I kind of like to do is have the lip a little bit lighter so if I go back up with the dove gray and just kind of extend the little pottery lip and the dove gray, it looks like stoneware. It's kind of like a warm tannish gray. That way I can stamp over, like if I have some leaves hanging over that, they're gonna show up. Um, and that's, that's nice. Now, if you do use a rougher side of your paper, which you totally can, it's just sometimes stamping, well, stamping's always easier on smoother paper, but if your paper was rougher, you're, it's gonna grab more color and you're gonna actually have a little more vibrancy. So there's a little benefit of working on the rougher side. Experiment, see what you like best. I'm also gonna show you how to preserve these so you can mail them without worrying about the, um, the colors smearing because these are postcards. And um, I just think it's kind of fun to be able to send something like a postcard. So here I have this kind of terracotta color. This is called clay. Ah, it's called clay. How convenient. Um, and I'm just adding some colors to the sides and I am adding a little shadow on this side. So when I go in, if I add more darker colors, I'm going to put it on the same side. So all the pots seem to agree. Now, sometimes if you're building a scene and you're using um, stamps, sometimes things look weird because of shading on, from the stamp company. It might be on conflicting sides. So that's what's nice about this is that you can make it exactly how you want it and um, and it's going to look really, really nice. But I would try not to have them too bold just because um, you're going to be uh, you're going to be stamping on top and you don't want to have to compete with the colors underneath. And then I would do a little bit of grass and I really like this color here. So I'm just going to do a little bit of grass around the stones. And I'm just going to go in with that with this darker gray and kind of outline some of the stones so that when I add the water to them, a little shadow near the pots there. So the sun's coming in from that direction. So I want a little more shadow on the um, right hand sides of these pots. You know, just outline things. I'm going really quick. Take your time, sit outside in your garden if you have one or on your patio and, and sketch some pots and, and have fun with it. And then I thought it'd also be nice um, to do a little color in the sky, but you know what I want to do for that? Because I don't want to have a really harsh, um, streaky dark color. I want it really light so I can stamp over it. I'm just going to go in with my water brush and some water and just paint with it just like I am with watercolor paints. And you can use your watercolor paints for this totally. I just think it's a little easier to sketch and everything um, with my with my pencils, but you totally use whatever you have. And, um, and if you don't have these stamps from Rubber Stamp Tapestry, then use small stamps that you do have. Or maybe try freehanding some flowers in there. I want these tutorials to be useful for everybody, whether you want to uh, use stamps or you want to do it freehand or what have you. Now again, if I want more color, I could pick, and I don't want to have streaks, I'll pick it up from my pencil and just add it in. So fun and so pretty, and anybody can do this. Okay, and if I do want more definition, I can go in, can define that lip underneath, define the edges, add some more detail in the glazing. expressive strokes or I could leave it plain. It's completely up to however you want to do it. Um, I'm going to go in with this one next. 
and I'm trying to keep this pretty still so you guys can watch it without getting seasick but uh, feel free to move around the paper as you go so that you are comfortable while you're working and really you don't have to spend a ton of time on this you know enjoy it but simple is good simple is really good with these and then I can go in and do my stones I can actually kind of just wash over them and then go in with a pencil and redefine any of the pebbles. I like to have them kind of blend off into nothing. And then I'm going to go in with the grass. Actually, you know, now that I'm seeing on this smoother paper, I think I actually like the rougher paper a little bit better. Um, it'll, the stamping is going to be easier on the smoother paper, but I kind of like the texture of the rougher paper. So, you know, just, uh, just put that out there and then you can go in and you can define any of the petals you want to. You don't have to do them all, just a few. Or you can do them all, I mean, it's your picture. I just like it, it feels kind of like it's either sitting on in a rock garden or it's on your patio. I just, I like that. And if you want any like little darker tufts of grass, you can go ahead and just sketch them in. Any little moss grown between the stones. And that's how we do that. And of course, you go back in if you feel like, well, I wish that was a little bit darker. I'm just going to go in and add a little bit. If you wait till it's dry, then you can blend it in with your pencils. If you do it while it's still wet, you're going to get kind of more accented lines, but that's completely up to you. So there's our little pot. And um, if you want to do the, sh I'll show you the window box here, because I think I'll show you how to stamp in that one. This one is so easy, and you could really do any set in any of these, but um, this is really pretty with the roses. It'll also be really pretty with any sort of bouquet that you want to do, like Pansy Garden or whatnot. And you can do larger flowers in this. This was really simple. Um, let's see, I need, a, I need a postcard. Let's do this one on the rougher side just to see, just for fun. Um, so here we're going to start off with a long skinny rectangle. Okay. not perfectly centered up. I'm not going to worry about it. And then we're going to do pull a slanted line down from each side. Then we're going to do another line across. And that is our window box. Add some shading. We're going to try to keep it fairly light up here so that we can stamp over it. And then for our windows, what I like to do is just do two rectangles with the gray very, very lightly because we're going to be stamping over that. So here, I'm not even going to do the bottom line actually, and just some lines there for reflection. We'll go in with some light blue. I don't want to use this one only because the, it's still wet and if I go with a wet pencil on top of that paper, it's going to, um, it's going to leave a streak. No one streaks in our windows now. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with a dark gray and I'm going to do the shutters which look line down, line out, line down, line out. This one will actually see the edge, so I'll bring that up. That one's kind of going off, so I'm just going to leave it. And then for the slats, I just want lines kind of coming out like that. So they start to get, at eye level, they go straight and they start to tip up. Okay, so just, per, just because of perspective. But again, don't put a ton of detail on these because this is not the focal point of your creation. Do a little bit of yellow in the um, in the box as well, and then all you have to do is liquefy these elements, and then you'll be able to stamp on them. And we'll get to the stamping in just a second. Once you have freehanded um, and you've liquefied everything, just go in like I mentioned before with a little bit of. Um, of water and your and your pencil and just pick up the color and then just add little bits of shadow that you want like the the I think I'm gonna use some actually some black which is something I don't usually use on the shutters just to kind of shade them a little bit but seriously think of it kind of like urban sketching it's very very um, loose and just impressionistic and suggestive and you can go and redefine any of these lines that you want to, but just try to keep it, you know, fairly easy. And I also like to put a few just like, um, like shutter, not shutters, what do you call it? Uh, 
boards on the side of the house looks like siding or something and that just helps set the scene and make it look a little bit um more realistic so there's one all dried and this one is i'm just going to set aside to dry so let's do some stamping on this one and what i'm going to do is actually the same type of stamping i did on my roses here because i really um i really think that lends itself well to this again you could use any kind you want but i really really like this so i'm going to use little ink spots here and i'm going to use a couple shades of darker green and i'm going to use a couple shades of red and we're gonna stamp our roses. I'm gonna start with these leaves because they're pretty big, and I'm also gonna do my larger roses first. So I think I'll actually do my, fla my, my flowers first just because those I can kind of tuck in and overlap around, and these I really wanna be um, sure where I'm stamping them, so. And this is, you know, this is a fairly rough paper. It's still doing all right. I'm gonna go in with a darker one here. Oh, and if you want more of a watercolor look, um, you can mist your um, your stamps with water before you stamp, and then you'll get a little bit more um, intense watercolory look, which is very pretty. I'm gonna go in with my smaller rose too while I'm at it, and I do like the misting look, so I'm gonna do the lighter color and give it a mist. We'll see what that looks like. And you can stamp it a couple times, which is really nice. So stamp, mist, so I get that watercolory look. And that's pretty. I think that's probably plenty of roses. And now I'm gonna do these um, leaves. So I'm gonna do this nice dark one first. Give it a mist. Because the key is to have it look very watercolory. I think I'm going to stamp each time on this because I think it will be too light. Now without the mist you don't get as intense of a result um, and I like the intensity so I'm gonna, I did it with a lighter color, I'm going to go in with the water and tuck that in there and maybe another one with a lighter one and a mist. You can probably have like a really like a wet paper towel too if you don't want to stop and mist just to moisten the stamps but I know this doesn't gonna, this isn't going to take any of the uh, ink away. Yeah, let's do another dark one to hang over the edge. There we go. And now, um, I like this little branch here. I'm going to do this in brown. And just throw a few of these. Remember to keep an eye on the registration marks on the side of your stamp so you know where to put them. I feel like this um, might need a little bit more. <laughs> Uh, I feel like this ink pad might need a little rejuicing. Now you're probably thinking, okay, what's with all of the light area on the bottom? What do we do with that? Well, that is where I like to go back in with my pencils and fill in because then you ground your image so your roses aren't floating in space. We don't want them floating up, but they're not magical, surreal roses floating all over the place. So go in and we put a little bit of color here and then we go in with our water brush and we blend it out. And there you could take your time and really fill in and that way if you had any errors when you were stamping it doesn't really matter because they go away now if you want to have a little more color on your roses you could go with like a nice light pink here and i would still just pick it up like this because memento it is a water-based ink but it does lock down the paper pretty well once you um i wouldn't watercolor over it necessarily but I can go over it with this lighter pink and it's not really lifting the ink I have underneath. The Memento, and I've noticed that with the markers too, um, they don't blend out very well after they've dried, after you've like colored with them. You'd want to kind of scribble them onto a um, piece of plastic or a dish or something if you wanted to do that. Now look at how quick and easy that was and you've got a beautiful um, bouquet of flowers there. Now I also wanted to show you the strawberries because they're quite a bit different. The pots here, same deal with the roses. You just use smaller flowers for your smaller pots. Same idea. Okay, and I'll show you that one again just so you see. Same exact idea. I did the same thing with filling in with my pencil when I was done. Exact same technique. So I'm not going to show you that again and bore you. Um, but for the strawberry plants here, that's a little different. So, and the thing I really love is that every single one of these you do is going to be a little different. And I think that's really special um, because no two people are going to get the exact same card. So I'm going to grab the strawberry stamps here. I'm going to start with my basic strawberry and I'm going to stamp it. Oh, I've got this Mellow Mambo. These things are all very, very nice. I think I could probably use um, both of those. They're, they're fairly similar. Let's see. 
So this is the Melon Mambo from Stampin' Up. Let's just see how that looks on its own. That's nice and rich. Let's see how this other one looks. This is the Alta New Ruby Red. Let's hang that one down over the edge. Oh, they're both pretty. They both work really well. Um, so you can decide whether you want to... Um, whether you want to multi-stamp, whether you want to wet your inks. I don't think I really need to. And plus, this is also the smooth side, so you can see how when I'm stamping on a smooth paper, um, the smooth side versus the rough side, I get a much darker image because the ink is touching every bit of the paper. It's not skipping at all. When you add the water to them, and you because you're working on watercolor paper and it's maybe a little rougher, it um, it kind of makes a thicker, juicy layer on there so when you press it down it gets fed into the little cracks of your paper or the little gullies I should say so that's kind of why that works I just wanted to help clarify that hopefully maybe I didn't maybe I did I don't know I hope I did but um so I'll just kind of show you why that why that works in some cases Get some less ripe ones if you give it a couple stamps now try to remember you're going to be needing to stamp little tops on these strawberries so you will want a little room. I feel like these are all way too lined up so I'm going to dangle one down a little bit lower over here just so it's... I think I'll put one on the ground too just so that on its side. So I'm looking at the registration mark and I'm going to make sure I have it lying down there. And maybe give them a little friend over there. There we go. So we'll have two strawberries off to the side. I think that's fun. Um, okay, and I can always go back and add more, which is nice. So now I've got the strawberry leaves, and um, I'm going to use a couple different shades of green here. I'm just going to cover that brown for right now so I don't mistakenly get it. So I'm going to try stamping it on its own first with these two different shades and see what I get. It is stamping pretty well, so I don't know if I necessarily am going to... Um, I'm going to get into the spraying with the water at all just because it seems to be fine. You know, just kind of keep an eye on your registration mark. That's where the stem is going to be coming out. Well, I'm going to spray this one. We'll do one there. Oh yeah, so you get a, you get more of like a shadowy look when you spray. It looks kind of like they're further away and less in focus. I kind of like that. So. I'm going to do a few of those here and there. Hopefully my head's not in the way because I'm kind of getting down there really looking to see where I want to put things. Don't worry about that. I have little ways that I correct that. Like if I have a, a smudge right there, I'll go back in with my strawberry. i like, oh, look at that. We'll have, we'll have a strawberry hanging out over here. Look, it looks like the stem now. So, And since we do that over there, let's do one over here to bounce it out. <laughs> okay, so now we've got the little stem right here, the little hull. And we're going to do that with a darker ink. And I don't think that's going to need to be sprayed. And so here, this is kind of tricky. So the, there's a little stem on there, and that's what's lined up with the registration mark. So actually, this is going to be, you're going to be stamping over the strawberry and using this to kind of line up with the outside edge of the strawberry. So here, hopefully I get it. And I always have some a little off. It always takes me a little bit. But um, so I kind of know that that's where the stem is and I'm just kind of stamping it on top and I have yet to stamp one perfectly right now but that's all right it's handmade it's supposed to not be absolutely perfect and now I've got the little flower so what I'm going to do here is double stamp I'm going to stamp um, in yellow first and then I'm going to rock the edges in blue so I have kind of a two-tone flower and I'm going to put them anywhere I see um, and I'm, I'm cleaning between because I don't want to get that blue on my yellowing pad. I'm going to put them anywhere I feel like I've got room for a little flower. I don't want a ton of them because I want to just kind of accent with these. Again, cleaning between. And now I'm going to go back to my leaves again and um, add some more some more leaves with the spraying technique and my lighter color just because I feel like I want... It's not full enough now that I see the... Uh, the leaves and everything in there, I definitely want a little bit more color. You could also use markers for this. They would work really well. I am trying to get a couple stamps per, a couple of impressions per inking. But I think this, uh, it really helps it look like a watercolor when you missed the, um, 
the stamps. I feel like I want just a Sometimes I'll just kind of go in and just rock it on there so I just get a partial impression because I want, um, I don't want that exact same flower leaf every time. And you can go in with other leaves too to uh, give it a little bit more um, of a unique look, to give it more of a realistic look. And then here I'm going to go in with this um, curly Q in brown. Just trying not to set my examples into the, uh, into any things and just go in and throw some curly cues here and there and it really helps it make it look real natural and fun and it adds a lot of texture and it's just a really fun little postcard that you can send to somebody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you check out our sponsor Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. Try this technique out. I know you can sketch these. I know you are totally able to do this and it's so much fun and you can do a lot with the stuff you already have on hand which is really great. Oh, before I forget, I uh, told you I would show you how to protect these images um, and like in case you're worried about the stuff smudging in roots, what you want to do is just rub some wax over the surface. I'm just using some canning wax here. Um, it's a beeswax paraffin mix, but you can use an old candle, whatever you have. Just make sure it's like clear wax. All right, so then you've got this uh, sheen on it, but to get the sheen to go away, once you've got it fully coated, I just take a heat gun and I just heat it up here and that's going to make it uh, melt out and absorb and then you'll have a nice protective finish for your um, for your postcard and actually makes the colors seem a little bit more vibrant once it sinks in there. So just a great little tip you can use so that your artwork will not wash away if it gets touched with wet fingers or gets caught out in the rain when it's being delivered. Don't forget to use a coupon code watercolor to save money on your order. 20% off, it's pretty crazy, on your order of peg stamps and peg stamp st sets of over $10 or more. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.